Hello everyone, welcome to Wine for Ten, the wine blog that explores inexpensive wine. So let me, uh, let me start out by kind of explaining the premise of this show. I, I love wine. I've been drinking wine since I was very young. Uh, I love expensive wine, don't get me wrong. Um, you know, I enjoy a $50 bottle of wine, but that's a little bit out of my reach. Uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. So, what I think is more interesting is the ability to find a good wine for under $10. Anybody can throw $25, $30, $40, $100 at a bottle of wine and come back with something that's uh, very good. I mean, it's not a sure thing, obviously, but uh, it's, it's not impressive. If I'm going to a dinner party and I'm expected to bring a bottle of wine, I think it's much more sophisticated to bring something that is under $10. And it's, it's more interesting because the people who share the wine with you, if it's a reasonably priced wine, it's in their reach to go out and get this. So you can share with them your discovery, and they can enjoy it by going out and buying it and you know experiencing this wonderful wine again and this doesn't happen if you're bringing an expensive bottle of wine and who you know you, you don't want the reputation of being a snooty person by bringing a fifty dollar bottle of wine i mean you plunk that down on the table and everybody's like oh my god fifty dollars or whatever even thirty i mean that's crazy so we are going to explore the art of picking good wines for under ten dollars, and there are thousands of wines. We, you know, we are never going to run out of content on this show because there is an endless supply of good wine for under ten dollars. And you know, when I say good wine, that that means something different to everybody. But um, you know, I want to share with you what I know about wine. I want to make some recommendations. Um, I'm not going to get too crazy on describing the wine's flavor in terms of, you know, black currants and red cherries and all that stuff, because I kind of think that uh, it starts to sound like noise after a while. I mean, who really buys a bottle of wine based on that, gets home and goes, whoa, wait, whoa, wait a second. I'm not tasting those black currants like it said on the review. Um, and, you know, Another thing is those numbers that you see uh, when you go to the wine store. Um, don't always pay attention to those. Those can be misleading. Um, let's see. A couple of other things that are important and I want to share with you. And, you know, you can call this a tip. But and I, I kind of learned this uh, the hard way. Um, the grocery store is not the place to buy good wine. And it's not even the place to buy um, inexpensive wine or get a good deal on a bottle of wine. The grocery store is full of what I call the mass, mass produce wine. And the, the biggest offender of this is Yellowtail. I'm not a fan of Yellowtail. I, I think this is the ultimate in bad um, form when buying wine. You know, it's it's everywhere and it's really not that good. I'm going to show you a lot of wine that is cheaper than Yellowtail and far superior. Okay, so please stop buying Yellowtail. Let's expand our palate. Make a promise to me that you're not going to buy Yellowtail because I always tell people if I had a bottle of Yellowtail in my refrigerator I don't have any wine. Okay, think of Think of inexpensive wines, uh, and this is, I'm going to get into an analogy here, so, um, like fishing. You know, I used, when I was a kid, my brother was into fishing, and um, <clears throat> he uh, used to tell me that the real trick in fishing isn't to land a big fish. <clears throat> it's to land a big fish with thin line, okay? You know, they, they, you, t you hear these stories about I landed a 10-pound bass on a 2-pound test. That's a challenge. Anybody can land a 10-pound bass on a 20-pound test line. So, 
picking out a good wine for under ten dollars is an art form and that's one that we're going to explore uh, on this show on a day-to-day -day basis and I'm going to encourage you to also expand your um, palette and your varietals of wine um, we're going to be covering red and white uh, and everything in between so uh, without any further ado let's uh, jump into our first wine and uh, this is a Rioja from Spain uh, it's the Castillo de Almanza uh, 2005 and just let me show you that Okay. And it's, I don't know if you can see that, but it's $9.99, so we just made it under the $10 price point. And um, so let's dive right in. Okay. The first thing I want to uh, stress when you're drinking wine is, at least for me, Half the enjoyment is in the smell of the wine, okay? So you want to you wanna swish it around really good. And you see people doing this. Um, and this is to kind of get, the, you know, aerate the wine. And uh, you really want to smell whoops, the wine carefully uh, before you drink it. I, I think it sort of sets it up uh, for your palate. Um, so let's, let's give it a little smell here. So this has got a big nose on this wine. Um, it's a little, uh, it's not what I expected. I'm getting lots of earthy components. Um, some, and this is going to sound weird, uh, some manure, uh, which is not a bad thing. It kind of goes hand in hand with the, uh, the earthy. Uh, smell. So let's uh, let's give it a whirl. I like to chew my wine, so excuse me if uh, you think this is kind of weird, but that's how I do it. So not not quite what I expected. Not really. Um, really uh, a distinctive Rioja. I wouldn't have guessed it was a Rioja in a blind test. Um, it's definitely got lots of um, lots of stuff going on here, but not necessarily all good. Um, it it, it kind of tastes like, and, and this is a little bit strange, but it tastes like if I took some bubble gum, you know those big hunks of bubble gum, the, the pink kind, and you threw it in the dirt and you kind of rolled it around and then threw it back in your mouth. You know, I'm, I'm tasting that that uh, really over um, sweet fruit on top of like earthy manure uh, flavors. So it's kind of a weird mixture. And you're going to get, you're going to find a lot of these uh, wines with, with what I call the fake fruit. And I don't like fake fruit, but it sells, and we're gonna we're gonna try and uh, weed that out. But uh, let me get another whirl here. I've never tasted a wine like this, so this is kind of exciting. This is a very dry wine. Um, if you don't like, you know that kind of heat and dry uh, flavor on your palate, you're not going to like this. Um, and the aftertaste is, it's a little bit off. Um, it, it, it is interesting. I don't think a lot of people will like it. Um, so overall, I'm going to have to give this wine uh, a pass. So um, kind of disappointing, but I'm going to have to say that the uh, 2005 Castile del Almanza Rioja um, does not get my vote. So that's it for today. Thank you for joining me, and I'll see you tomorrow.